This episode of Be Educated is recorded in October of 2020, when many of us are or have been in some way impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. Today, I want to share how these times are influencing environmental education as a whole and shed some light into ways that we can strive to improve our approach to environmental education wherever and really whenever you are listening to this. I recently came across an alarming study that was published by the University of California, Berkeley. This study, which was published in June of 2020, found that of the roughly 1,000 environmental education organizations surveyed from 49 of our 50 states in the United States, 63% of the organizations were unsure they would be able to open again if pandemic restrictions continued through the end of the year. 11 million kids are estimated to be missing opportunities offered by these environmental education organizations from the time of COVID restrictions through December alone. Shutting down permanently would displace approximately 30,000 employees in the United States. I do not currently have a number for how many of these workers have already been laid off or furloughed, what the situation looks like outside of the United States, but what I can say is that several months later, in October, we are still within COVID-19's reach. Although there haven't been any follow-up studies on this subject yet, we can assume that these stats have shifted as some communities have resumed in-person meetings and some businesses have reopened. But of course, this is not the case for all of us and we cannot predict what the future might hold. From conducting my own research and hearing others' stories firsthand, I know that the interest in environmental education has not disappeared with any opportunities that have been lost to us, which of course is really important for the future of the environmental education industry. In fact, there is evidence to suggest that COVID-19 has heightened interest in environmental matters on a global scale, from people who are quicker to value their time outdoors to consumers who are making more environmentally conscious purchases. People are also raising more awareness to environmental issues and actively searching for ways that they can improve conditions on local to regional scales. I was reading a business article that was observing these patterns and they quoted a business school lecturer from the University of Oxford that helped explain why this all was happening to me. In this quote, the lecturer talked about how we are all reframing our interests because the rhythm of our old routines have been interrupted and now we have begun to reconnect with places in our local communities and these matters that are outside of our work-life bubbles that we wouldn't otherwise have had the opportunity or um, concern to engage with. In conversations that I've had with a number of environmental education organization representatives and teachers, I know that parent and guardians' interests in enrolling their kids in programs have increased with COVID-19. Some of the people I've talked to have actually increased their environmental education programming to keep up with this demand while practicing safe health precautions. There are a number of other silver linings to the slowdown of environmental education programming that is currently happening. Organizations can take these opportunities to re-examine goal and mission statements and analyze whether they are best serving their communities. We can commit to discovering better ways to improve our teaching strategies, to analyzing our outreach methods, and to do things like strengthen our relationships with, within our reach. Environmental educators are some of the most flexible people that I have ever met because of the necessity to work in unpredictable and unstructured settings. 
Applying the adaptability of these teaching skills to better reach our teaching goals is not impossible. There are a number of ways and examples of educators doing just that today. Teachers that are visiting classrooms in place of canceled field trips that would require group transportation, uh, reaching out to larger audiences through technology. And no, these strategies do not work for all of us. We do not all have access to nearby natural areas that we can make use of. We do not all have consistent access to technology. But the adaptability of our teaching abilities means that we can discover new opportunities and approaches to sharing our passions and spreading appreciation for the environment with whoever is listening. We just have to figure out the best way that works for us, our organizations, our communities. Thanks for listening to, the, to today's podcast at Be Educated. Check out our website to find a list of additional resources for implementing environmental education teachings with your family, friends, students, neighbors, etc. Until next time.